Me and Marvin Gardens, Chapter 9, Questions and Meatloaf. There were questions. There were always questions. Are you even following along in class? Mom asked. Kind of, I said. The homework is just boring. Worksheets all the time. Even if you don't like worksheets, you still have to do them, she said. It's homework. He said he'd let me do them again, I said. He gave me a packet. He says you failed the test, too. That means you lied to us yesterday. I didn't say anything. She said, if you fall behind in math now, in sixth grade, it'll be harder year after year. You'll miss important things. I wanted to tell her about why Mr. Mustache hated me, but I didn't because it would get Bernadette in trouble for what she'd done to him when she was in sixth grade. Mom pointed upstairs. Go to your room and do the worksheets. I sighed. Can I at least go to the creek first? No. After dinner? No. But what if I have them all done by then? No. She didn't even look at me. When I got to my room, I cried. I punched the pillows on my bed. I even cursed a few times under my breath. The whole idea of punishing me this way was dumb because I didn't want to do the stu stupid worksheets before I got punished. Now I didn't want to do them at all. Mr. Mustache was boring, all worksheets and discipline. Three years ago, he caught Bernadette writing in her journal during math class, and he didn't just confiscate it, he read it. Bernadette had been reading books about spies, and she kept good notes on Mr. Mustache. Mr. Mustache didn't appreciate what she wrote, and he held a grudge. The first thing he said to me when I walked into his class in sixth grade was, So you're the other Devlin kid, huh? Hope you're smarter than your sister. If I was a dog, I'd have growled at him and clamped onto his leg for talking bad about Bernadette. But I was Obi Devlin. I just sat there and glared at him. And now I tried my best not to fall asleep in his boring, stupid worksheet class. I picked up a notebook and tried to draw Marvin Gardens. I wasn't very good at drawing, so I kept trying until the dinner bell. Dinner was meatloaf. Dinner was more questions. Dad said, I don't understand. Why would you lie to us? I don't know. It's just math. You like math, he said. I just nodded and ate my meatloaf. You're getting too wrapped up in what's going on around here, Mom said. The field and the developments and the noise. Probably my fault. I made too big of a deal out of it all, out of all of it. No, you didn't, I said. It's bad. It's worse for you anyway because you lived here all your life. You didn't make too big of a deal out of it, Mom, Bernadette said. We're all sad. I'm not sad, Dad said. You're addicted to Monopoly, Bernadette said. I'm not addicted. You make us play twice a week at least, and it's Monopoly, Dad. Can't you see the connection, she answered. Men just deal with things different than women, he said. Isn't that right, Obi? We fix things. We don't cry. We solve problems. There's no solution to this problem, I said. It's almost over now anyway, Mom said. We should just get on with our lives and get used to the new neighborhood. And you need to stop wasting your time out at that creek. Dad said to me. Obviously, it's now interfering with your homework. It wasn't the creek, I said. When I said this, I got a nosebleed. Right then, as if the universe wanted my parents to know that something was wrong, but I couldn't tell them. As I got a few tissues and folded them up and put them to my nose, I excused myself to the couch to get horizontal. I took out my favorite book from our small bookshelf next to the couch, The Atlas of World History. It was cooler than any social studies book at school because it was arranged by dates and had timelines and maps. Maps helped me learn and remember stuff better. I flipped around the pages and read interesting facts from a thousand years ago and fifty years ago. I replaced the tissues on my nose every ten minutes or so. The nosebleeds were slowing down by the time Bernadette did the dishes. Dad walked by me to go to the bathroom in the den, but he didn't even ask me how I was doing. I kept my head buried in my book and was glad they didn't ask questions. If they did, I might have to tell them why I had the nosebleeds, and Dad wouldn't be happy about that story at all.